test car shoots down a road and smashes into a pole. The body crumples, but the cabin holds. That is what great engineering feels like. Now imagine that same stubborn spirit in an engine that the whole industry wrote off. The rotary was fast, smooth, and weirdly lovable. It was also thirsty and dirty, so it faded away. But on February 1st, 2024, Mazda restarted a real rotary department. 36 engineers with a single goal. Make the rotary fit the modern world. And this time, they might. Not a museum trick, but production hardware with a real plan. Mazda's rotary team returns. On February 1st, 2024, Mazda made the comeback official by bringing back a dedicated rotary engine, or RE, development unit. They call it the RE Development Group, and it sits inside the company's powertrain organization, not in a marketing corner. That detail matters. When an automaker creates a department, it is because real work is planned, with real budgets and deadlines. Mazda said the group has 36 engineers. That is not a massive army, but it is more than enough to build prototypes, test hardware, and prepare something that could reach production. Mazda also described a very modern mission. The old rotary dream was a small engine that made big power and revved forever. The new mission is survival. The engine must pass strict emissions rules in major markets. It must fit into hybrid systems. It must be able to run on cleaner fuels, including so-called carbon neutral options. Mazda has been clear that the rotary's compact shape is still an advantage. It can sit in places a piston engine struggles to fit. It runs smoothly with less vibration. And because it has fewer moving parts, it can be simple in ways a complex turbo engine is not. But Mazda is not pretending the old problems never existed. Instead, it is changing the role of the rotary, so those problems hurt less. That shift is the key theme of this entire revival, and it leads straight to why the rotary vanished in the first place. Why the rotary disappeared. The rotary engine, first developed from Felix Wankel's idea, looked like a revolution in the 1960s and 1970s. Instead of pistons moving up and down, a rotor spins inside a housing. The result is compact power. The engine is light. It is smooth. It can spin to high revs without the violent shaking you get from many piston engines. Mazda leaned into that personality and built a fan base around it. Cars like the RX-7 and RX-8 became symbols of a different kind of driving, but the rotary strengths came with harsh trade-offs. Fuel economy was weak. A rotary's combustion chamber shape and sealing challenges make it harder to burn the air and fuel mix completely. Unburned fuel can slip through as hydrocarbons. That was bad in an era when emissions rules were getting tighter every year. Then the oil crises of the 1970s made fuel thirst a public enemy. Drivers suddenly cared less about high rev thrills and more about miles per gallon. Reliability also became a talking point. The apex seals, tiny parts that help seal the rotor's chambers, take a lot of stress. When they wear, compression drops and performance falls. Mazda improved these parts over time, but the engine still had a reputation for being picky about maintenance and oil use. Mazda kept refining the rotary for decades, but by 2012, the math was brutal. The RX-8 ended, and the rotary was shelved. The industry moved toward efficient turbo fours, strong hybrids, and eventually full electric cars. For most brands, the rotary became a dead end. For Mazda, it became unfinished business, the MX-30 range extender, a quiet comeback. While many people were waiting for an RX revival, Mazda restarted the rotary in a much quieter way. In 2023, it launched the MX-30 eSkyActiv REV, a plug-in hybrid that carries a small 830cc single rotor engine. The twist is how it is used. The rotary does not drive the wheels. It works as a generator. The car moves on an electric motor, and the battery does the heavy lifting. When the battery gets low, the rotary spins to make electricity and extend range. This job fits the rotary's nature better than the old sports car role. 
In a traditional car, the engine is asked to constantly change speed, load, and temperature. That is when a rotary can drink fuel and push emissions higher. As a range extender, the engine can run in a narrow, steady band where it is happiest. It can stay at a smooth, constant speed. That makes tuning easier, and it gives emissions control hardware a more stable environment to work with. It also highlights another rotary benefit, packaging. The engine is small and can be placed where it causes less harm to cabin space. It is also naturally smooth, which matters when you are using it like an onboard power plant. Because it is a spinning mass, it feels calm at a steady RPM, and a single rotor can make enough power for charging without needing a big block. That keeps weight down, which helps both range and handling. The MX-30 REV was not made to be a headline sports car. It was a test bed. It proved Mazda could build a modern rotary that meets current regulations when used as a generator. More importantly, it kept the skills alive inside the company. If you want to bring the rotary back in a bigger way, you first need to prove it can live in the real world again. Mazda did that quietly before the big announcement. Iconic SP, the sports car that changed the tone. Later in 2023, Mazda rolled out the concept that made enthusiasts sit up straight. At the Japan Mobility Show, it unveiled the Mazda Iconic SP, a compact two-seat sports car concept with a low nose and bold, sharp surfacing. It looked like a promise, not a polite idea. Under that body was a two-rotor rotary EV system, paired with an electric motor. Mazda talked about maximum output around 370 PS, which is serious power for a car of that size. The important part was not only the number, it was the layout. Like the MX-30, the rotary is positioned as part of a hybrid system, where it can be used closer to its best operating range. The electric side gives instant torque and easy low-speed drive. The rotary side can focus on making electricity and supporting the system when needed. On paper, each half covers the other's weak spots. Mazda also leaned hard into fuel flexibility. It said the rotary system could run on carbon-neutral fuels, and it has mentioned options like synthetic fuels and even hydrogen in the broader discussion. That matters because it shifts the argument away from pure tailpipe numbers and toward life cycle impact. If the fuel is made using captured CO2 and clean energy, then burning it can be closer to net zero. Then there is emissions hardware. Since 2012, catalysts, sensors, and control software have improved massively. Mazda says it is aiming for compliance with tough upcoming standards, including Euro 7 in Europe and the next round of US standards. And it is still working on the rotary's old weak point, the apex seals. Better materials and coatings can reduce wear and keep compression stable for longer. Concept cars often die on stage, but Mazda's wording has been unusually serious. It has talked about production study, and it has hinted that the technical side is far along. The last step is deciding if the business case can carry the dream, Vision X Coupe, and the high-stakes business bet. In 2025, Mazda showed another idea that pushed the story beyond nostalgia. The Vision X Coupe concept leaned into a future where the fuel itself is part of the solution. Mazda highlighted algae-based biofuel and talked about capturing carbon in new ways. The message was simple. The rotary does not have to be a dirty relic if the system around it changes. Pair it with electric drive. Feed it cleaner fuel. Use modern control tech. Suddenly, the rotary becomes a tool, not a problem. That is the dream. The reality is harder. Mazda is a smaller player. Developing any new engine costs a fortune, and a rotary is a special case because the supply chain and knowledge base are not shared across the whole industry. On top of that, the market is not begging for two-seat sports cars. Most buyers want crossovers. Many want full EVs. Even many enthusiasts now daily drive turbo fours and electric hot hatches. So why risk it? Because difference is valuable. In a world where many cars feel similar, an engine with a unique sound, smooth feel, and high rev character can create an identity that money cannot easily copy.
Mazda has long sold the idea of the joy of driving, and the rotary is one of the clearest symbols of that promise. The fuel question is the biggest wild card. Carbon neutral fuels may grow, but they could also stay expensive and limited. If that happens, regulators may not give much credit, and the rotary's green argument weakens. Still, other brands are watching. Companies like Porsche have invested in synthetic fuels for similar reasons. Mazda's experiment asks a bigger question. Can internal combustion survive in small emotional niches alongside electrification? Mazda has not publicly signed the final production order for a rotary sports car, but the pieces are lining up. The generator role is proven. The hybrid path is clear. Now it comes down to one decision. Is passion worth the price? So the rotary is not returning as a simple throwback. Mazda is reshaping it into a helper, a generator, and maybe one day the heart of a new sports car. The tech is better now. The rules are tougher too. Carbon neutral fuels might grow, or they might stay rare and pricey. That uncertainty is the whole gamble. Still, the move matters because it shows Mazda is willing to be different when most brands follow the same path. If a rotary hybrid hits the road, it will not just be fast. It will be proof that character can survive change again.